Happy belated St. Patty's Day for all of my Irish kin out there. Uh, today I made uh, some corned beef, a uh, real easy recipe, and I'll, sh and I'll link below. I'll have, um, or I'll write up below how I made it, but it's pretty similar to how I do um, slow cooked meats in my Dutch oven, which as you know, I love using. Today I'm actually gonna focus on the side dish, which is Brussels sprouts and bacon, and it tastes wonderful. I know for St. Patty's Day you're thinking, shouldn't it be corned beef and cabbage? Well, you could do that, but Brussels sprouts is, they're green, so that works too. And I'm sure they're they're related to the cabbage, so that makes it even more perfect for this dish. But the dish itself comes from uh, this book, which I've been plowing through uh, lately, which is The Real Meal Revolution. Uh, so any of you who, love ke who are thinking about going ketogenic, or it can also be known as low-carb, high-fat, or in South Africa, where this, the authors of this book hail from, uh, Banting. Uh, this is really a wonderful book. It has wonderful recipes in here and has a lot of detail about why, uh, if you're going to go ketogenic, why ketogenic really is the best way for you to go to lose weight and take control of your health. So that's something for you to consider. But right now what we're going to do is go ahead and make this delicious Brussels sprout and bacon dish. All right, I'm finishing up my Brussels sprouts. I'm getting them ready. I got two more to clean, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my butter going. You're gonna cook the bacon in butter. Mm, it just sounds good. Uh, I use, um, just so you know, is I use Kerrygold. Um, uh, uh, it's it's Irish butter, but it's uh, uh, grass-fed. Um, the milk uh, that makes the butter comes from cows that are grass-fed. Uh, a little healthier than what you usually buy at the store, but these can be a little expensive, so regular butter is just fine, unsalted. I have my little trusty scale out because the recipe I'm using measures this in grams, and I'm not an expert on grams, so it, that's uh, what I love about my little scale that I have is that it does measure um, uh, uh, grams, milliliters, ounces, pounds, so it measures all of that. So I'm not quite sure what 40 grams is, it requires 40 grams, but it's a little less than two ounces. So there's one, that's half. So it's about two, roughly close to two tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And then my butter, it's at 42 grams. I'm not gonna sweat that, that's fine. You don't have to be perfect. You just wanna be in the ballpark. I'm gonna go ahead and put that aside. And now my butter is ready. Um, I'm not going to let it get to room temperature, but I'm just going to go ahead and clean off, show you how I clean off the Brussels sprouts if you're, if, you not, if you're not familiar with using them. It's just they've already been washed. I cut off the ends here. The ends are cut off. And then what I do is I just peel away some of the leaves that are a little bit old and a little bit funky, so to speak. You check it out. That one's a little bit eh, scuffed up. If there's any like serious marks on it, I go ahead and then I'll... Um, uh, just remove them. But again, you just sort of cut off that stem, that the old part, and then you just want to remove the outer leaves, and you can usually remove them from the bottom. So this is one, if you can see it, has got a lot of, it's a little dinged up, it's a little dark marks on there, so I'm just taking it out. But again, you just sort of peel them straight off from the bottom. And there you go. It's good to go. I'm going to just put these, I forgot my little trash bucket, but that's okay. These are gonna go in the trash and then I'm gonna finish up the Brussels sprouts. All right, my butter, I'm melting it in my pan on a lowish, on a low heat. Uh, the bacon's gonna be going in. So while the butter is still melting and it's still in pretty big chunks, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my Brussels sprouts before I um, steam them to soften them up. I'm just gonna cut them just in half and that's it. Any leaves that fall out, I add them to the steamer basket. Not a big deal. Some of the big ones like this, that's fine. You can leave them. You can cut them in. You can cut them again if you'd like, but you just want to cut them in half, just like this. I tend when I cut them, you can sort of see where the leaves fold over. I sort of cut them so that, if I can explain this, it does the least amount of the leaves falling off. Um, there's, you know, you sort of want to cut them from top to bottom. And there you go. So real easy, Brussels sprouts are real easy. Steaming them is really good, but I'm gonna steam them and saute them. So that's a little bit different for this recipe, but it makes them taste wonderful. So I'm gonna finish these up and then get my bacon in the frying pan. All right, I got my butter 
melted. My bacon is sauteing it, is sauteing in the butter. I'm doing the bacon in batches, but uh, it's on a low heat. I'm going to turn it up just a tad to get it going. I didn't want to burn the butter, so I had it on a low heat to melt the butter. Um, what I'm going to do now is get the, uh, the, br the Brussels sprouts ready to be steamed. I've got a uh, little saucepan or medium-sized saucepan, and I'm going to use my steamer basket. This is um, a real important kitchen item to have if you don't have one. Uh, you don't, a lot of people go out and buy, you know, st uh, an actual steamer, and I've done that in the past, something you plug in and you steam vegetables or you make rice with it. But what I find is it takes a lot of room in a very small kitchen to manage that thing. So I just went to the steamer basket. It's so much easier. All you do, you put your basket in. You want to make sure there's enough water that it doesn't, it, you don't want the, the vegetables to be sitting in the water. You want it to be underneath it. So as you can see the water's underneath. I'm just gonna go ahead and evenly distribute the Brussels sprouts so they're all over. I'm gonna get, you know, put a lid on this, but it, I'm gonna st be steaming this uh, once the water starts boiling for about um, five minutes. Uh, steam it for five minutes. And then when that's done and my bacon's done, the Brussels sprouts are, I'm gonna transfer it to the pan that the bacon was in, use the, um, fat that was rendered from the bacon, mix in with a little bit of the butter, and finish um, cooking my Brussels sprouts. So we're gonna be getting to that in just a few minutes. Okay, the bacon is done. I already went ahead and cut it up into little squares. You can certainly cut it ahead of cooking it if you want it to and just cook it in your pan. Um, I just didn't do that. It was just because I had to do it in batches and it was just, I, I tend to prefer cooking bacon this way. Um, what I did, because there was a lot of fat that rendered off the bacon, I went ahead and actually drained the bacon on a paper towel, just take off any excess moisture. Now there is um, some, the oil is in here, it's hot, the, the, the fat from the bacon that was rendered and also a little bit of the butter, or the butter's in there as well. I've got this turned down to um, a lowish heat. I'm gonna check my Brussels sprouts. They should be pretty much tender now. You can see how that's nice steam, and I can pierce them with a the fork. They're still, yeah, I can really pierce them with a the fork, which is great. So I'm going to turn this off, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully head my Brussels sprouts to some hot oil. I'm actually going to turn that on to low, but I'm going to do this carefully. And you want to make sure you don't burn yourself. I think my cameraman even stepped away. You just don't want to plop these in. <laughs> Now, technically speaking with the recipe, you can leave everything in the pan and serve it this way. I'm not doing that because, like I said, my bacon rendered a lot of fat. So that's gonna just be too much oil in the pan for me to serve that way. I'm actually gonna put it into a serving dish, which I'm gonna put in the oven to keep warm before we're ready to eat. So I got everything in there, and I'm just gonna start stirring stuff around, tongs, are a wonderful tool. <laughs> you can stir, you can pick up, but I'm just gonna saute the Brussels sprouts in here, flipping them over. Just saute them in this for a bit. All right, my Brussels sprouts are done. I'm done sauteing them. I'm about to put the dish together. My corn beef, beef brisket is undercover. It's, it smells delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this dish up. And I've got my little secret reading here that we'll talk about in just a moment. But basically I have the Brussels sprouts in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the bacon on top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix all of this together. I'm just gonna, so the bacon just isn't sitting on top. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it all. Yay, you wanna, whoops, tried to get away. <laughs> okay. So I went ahead and I mixed, everything is all mixed up. Just want it nice and evenly distributed. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get out my little spoon. Oop, I'm actually, it's gonna be a knife for dolloping. Um, my secret ingredient that the recipe calls for is to use cream fraiche, which is basically, it's a French way of saying sour cream, but it doesn't taste quite like the American sour cream. It has, um, it's a little bit creamier. Uh, you can use it in desserts like pies, um, uh, cakes, muffins, uh, but it's, you just use basically dollops on here. If you can't find it, and you'll see how it's very different from our traditional sour cream. It's not, our sour cream tends to be tangier, let's put it that way. 
And what you're going to do is just add some dollops on here. It's almost like, you know, this sounds strange co coming from me, but when you sort of drizzle it, when you drizzle it a little bit, it sort of has a little bit of like consistency of paint. Uh, <laughs> but it tastes good. It tastes much better than paint does as I'm squirting it all over the place. But you're going to use maybe about three, a little bit more than three tablespoons. I'm not really measuring it, um, but I sort of have a pretty good feel for what this is. I'm going to go ahead and just scrape this off the spoon. They just put dollops on here, and I'm actually going to be putting this back in the oven to warm, um, and that'll help spread this out a little bit more. But uh, I had made this recipe for the first time and I added the um, creme fraiche and the husband just went insane over it. He just absolutely loved it. It's a little bit concerned about it because it's not traditional sour cream, but he, he really did enjoy it. I'm going to spread this out a little bit. But that's the dish. I'm just going to put it in the oven to keep it warm before we have dinner tonight. But um, it's a real easy recipe. The other nice thing about this dish is you can make it as a breakfast too. And all you need to do is crack it. This serves four because I'm using a pound of Brussels sprouts. All you need to do is crack four raw eggs on top after you make it, put it in the oven for about 20 minutes or so until those eggs are done, and then you've got yourself a real um, easy breakfast because you can make it ahead of time. You can make this the night before before you crack your eggs into it. Um, but it's a, it's a real easy dish. It's really tasty, very healthy uh, for anyone who's using low-carb, high-fat meals. Um, plus, you got bacon, and you really can't go wrong with bacon. So with that... I hope you enjoyed uh, this little recipe. If you did, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, or share it with friends. So until next time, I'll see ya.